Thank you, Dr. Washington. Uh, you know, as I sit and I look out, what a great environment we have here today. Usually I'm here for either the men's or women's basketball game, so this is, this is much better. To see all you guys here in, in today's environment, uh, just congratulations. It's great. It's, a, it's just awesome. Um, our guest commencement speaker uh, today is someone who is fascinated by technology and promise it can hold, the promise it can hold for a bright future. Barbara Humpton has been at Siemens since 2011. Starting as senior vice president in 2015, was named president and CEO. She guides strategy, engagement, and serving the company's largest market. Here's a detail that tells you a lot about who she is. During the pandemic, she started a podcast called The Optimistic Outlook. While many were lamenting where we were, she was already thinking about where we could be in the post-pandemic world. Ms. Humpton, who earned a mathematics degree from Wake Forest University, grew up the daughter of two math professors. So she is no stranger to the college campuses. We're so pleased to have her here, here on our, with us this morning to help us celebrate this special day. Please welcome Barbara Humpton. By the authority vested in me, by the Board of Visitors of George Mason University, I confer on Barbara Humpton the honorary degree of Doctorate of Humane Letters with all the rights and privileges thereunto belonging. Make sure we get it right. Thank you, President Washington. Thank you so much, Vice Rector Peterson. What an honor to be invited to be here and to address today's graduates. Let me also acknowledge Provost Walsh, the Board of Visitors, our deans, faculty and staff, and of course, let's hear it for our graduates. Congratulations to all of you. And before I begin, I want to actually say a special hello to Megan Rathburn, a Siemens employee who helped me prepare for this moment, who has earned her doctorate. Elizabeth, listen to your mother. <laughs> George Mason University is a very special place. You're graduating from a prestigious institution. I know it's been a lot of hard work, plenty of late nights, great conversations out on the quad, maybe a quick visit to the George statue before a really tough test, and I'm guessing there were a few parties too. You have excelled at this institution. You've made tremendous friendships that'll carry you for the rest of your lives, and now you face your biggest assignment yet building your own future. Now let me ask you, when you look ahead at this endeavor, are you excited? Are you nervous? Maybe you don't know what's next, that's okay. Or maybe you do know what's next and you can see the future you want unfolding. The key thing is this, get comfortable with uncertainty because you can't plan out every step. What you can do is be adaptable, be yourself, be authentic to who you are, and not just when everything is going well, but especially when you face setbacks. Leading our team at Siemens is one of the great joys of my life, but what set it in motion was actually the worst day of my career. It happened when I was at a different company, a company I had been with for 27 years. I was doing a job that I loved. I had started off in a technical role in the early days of software programming. I advanced into management and got to lead teams delivering tough projects for the US government. And then one day, I was called into my boss's boss's office. During that meeting, I was told that they had looked at all the jobs in the company. 
They had figured out that mine was one of the toughest. They said that my job was the perfect training ground for someone who could one day be CEO. And then they asked me to step aside. They said, we don't see you going further. They wanted to put a candidate for CEO into my role, and I wasn't a candidate myself. You see, I didn't fit the mold. At the time, it was believed there was an ideal model for a leader. Executives needed to be molded to fit that ideal. I was told I was too nice, too optimistic. I smiled too much. I wasn't executive material. So yes, it felt like a bad day. By all accounts, it was a bad day. Now stop and ask yourself, how would you react in that situation? Would you object? Would you try to defend your position? Would you crumble and dissolve in self-pity? Would you quit? I'll tell you what I did. I got to work transitioning my role to the next CEO candidate. I did everything in my power to ensure our customers and people would be well taken care of. I had a conversation with my husband Dave and asked him, where would we like to be in 10 years? And I created a profile on that new tool that's called LinkedIn. <laughs> you see, I'm an optimist. And I believe that optimism is how we find opportunity in uncertainty. Optimism is how we turn setbacks into steps forward. Now, you may be thinking, OK, Barb, this is great. It sounds great, but being optimistic is easier said than done. What happens when life really feels like it's coming undone, when everything feels unsteady? Let me be clear. I'm not talking about putting on rose-colored glasses when things get tough. I'm not talking about only looking at the sunny side of things. That's not the definition of optimism. To be an optimist is to see the world as it is, identifying problems and searching for ground truth. It's about believing that you have what it takes to persevere, to find solutions amid difficulty, to recognize that your worst day might actually lead to your best. After that day, I connected with former mentors and colleagues. I opened myself up to new opportunities, and I pursued those opportunities. And that's what led me to Siemens. As it turned out, that tough job was a great training ground for a future CEO. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, I didn't change my leadership style, but something else did change. Society changed. Business changed. What did change was the concept of who can be a leader and what it means to lead. The truth is, leadership comes in a lot of different packages. And it's by bringing our different strengths together that we get the best results in our universities, in our communities, in our businesses. So how did I eventually get the job? I raised my hand. For most of my career up until that point, I had simply answered the call. Someone would say, hey, we need you to do this, and i do what was asked. This time, I put myself forward. I knew what I could offer. I knew this was the job for me. And let me tell you, there is a real joy and a rush when you raise your hand for something and then get chosen to do it. So here's some additional advice. Figure out the kind of work that will bring you joy, work that aligns with your purpose and values. And when the right opportunities come, put yourself out there, raise your hand. Be known as the person that people can count on. Be ready to see things through. 
I don't think this part of career building is talked about enough. There's this sense that we should always be thinking about the next thing and the next. Throughout your career journey, remember to focus on what you're doing right now and do it well. There's real value in staying in a place long enough to understand it, to really be part of it. Maybe things get messy. Stay there long enough to help clean it up. Stay there long enough to make your mark. What's next will come. Now, let me add this. Have you heard the phrase that there are no small parts, only small actors? Be the person who does your role like it's the most important job in the organization, like it's the last job you'll ever have. I promise you, this mindset will serve you well. To the graduates of 2024, I wish you well in every endeavor. I hope your future is full of opportunity and growth, and I hope you reject the idea that there's one path, one mold for leadership and success. It took me my whole career to realize what you at George Mason already know. The secret to success is to be all together different, and we're stronger because of it. So be optimistic, be confident in what you have to offer, raise your hand for what you love to do, and no matter the challenges that lie ahead, may they always lead to your best days. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2024.